Installing Active Directory. Installing Active Directory itself is an incredibly easy task. We can either start a command prompt and type in DC promo, and up comes the Active Directory installation wizard. Now we'll just cancel this and we'll go with the second option. We'll click Start and Manage Your Server. This brings up the Manage Your Server interface which allows you to add or remove roles from your server. Now this interface isn't just for Active Directory. There are lots of roles that we can add or remove from our server using this interface. So to add or remove a role, we'll go over here and click Add or Remove Role. This brings up a message that just reminds us to ensure that everything is plugged in correctly when we hit Next. It will do a quick check of what's installed on our server just to make sure that everything's working properly before starting. Now, the wizard has checked our server and here it displays the results of what it found. Over here on the left, we have a bunch of roles that our server could have and on the right, it tells us here if that particular feature is currently installed on our server. So to install Active Directory, we'll need to make this server a domain controller. So over here we'll select Domain Controller and select Next. We'll get a brief summary of the action we're about to perform. Now this is what we want to do, so we'll hit Next. And off the wizard will go and it will launch the Active Directory installation wizard. We'll click Next. Here we get a message which tells us that if we're running Windows 95 or NT4 with Service Pack 3 in our environment, then we might run into some problems. So if that affects you, be sure to read this message. This does not affect us in our lab, so we'll click Next. Now we get two options. Do we want to create a domain controller for a new domain? Or will this server be a domain controller in an existing domain? In our case, this is a new installation and it's also our first server in our domain, so we'll choose the first option. However, if you already have an existing domain structure, which is probably more than likely, then this new domain controller will be added to your domain structure, then you'll choose the second option. But we want to choose the first, so we'll just click Next. Now we're asked three questions. Do we want this to be a new domain in a new forest? Do we want it to be a child domain in an existing domain tree? Or is this going to be a new domain in an existing forest? Well, we need to select the first option, as this is our first server. However, you would select the second option if you need to create a subdomain within an existing domain. Now as the description here says, if you already have a domain named headquarters.example.microsoft.com, we could make that as a child domain of the domain example.microsoft.com. If you choose this option, you will be prompted for a username and password that has the administrative privileges to install a new child domain. The third option allows you to create a new domain in an existing forest. This option allows you to have domains that do not share the same namespace in the same forest. So for example, let's say you've already have a, a forest that houses the Microsoft.com domain and you want to add the MSN.com domain. You'll note that both the namespaces are not the same. So selecting this option would allow both domains to exist in the same forest and also to be able to share resources. Again, with this option, you'll be prompted for a username and password that has the administrative privileges to install the new child domain. So for the last two options, you either have to have delegated permission to perform these tasks or be a member of the domain admin or enterprise admin groups. And we need to select the first option, so we'll just click Next. Now we need to provide the DNS details for our domain. So we'll call, call our new domain testdomain.com for this example and we'll click Next. Now the wizard needs to know what domain NetBIOS name older Windows clients can use to identify our domain. The default name you see here is the name we've provided in the last screen. We'll talk a little bit more about this subject in later videos, but for now we'll leave it at the default and click Next. Now, as Active Directory is really only a database, we need to tell the wizard where to store the database and the database logs. We'll accept the defaults here, but in real life situation, for best performance and reliability, you might want to store these on a dedicated RAID-based drive structure. So we'll just click Next.
Now we're asked where do we want to store the shared system volume. This sysvol folder contains the domain's public files and this is replicated throughout your domain to other domain controllers. Again I would advise this to be on a RAID volume but in our test domain we'll just accept the default and click next. Now as this is our first server in our domain we obviously do not yet have a DNS server. The wizard prompts us here to find out what we're going to do about it. Now we have three options. If we do actually have a DNS server and the wizard cannot contact it, we can pause here, resolve the problem, select the first option and then try again. Secondly, we can choose to install DNS on this server at the same time as we install Active Directory. Or finally, we can ignore the problem and configure DNS ourselves later and just ignore this error. In our example, we'll choose the second option as we don't have a DNS server yet, so we may as well go ahead and install it now on this server, and then we'll click Next. Now we're asked what are the default permissions on objects in our Active Directory will be. We have two options. We can select pre-Windows 2000 permissions or Windows 2000 and Windows 2003 permissions. In our lab, we're only going to use Windows 2000 and above so we'll check the second button. But in your situation, if you're running down-level clients like Windows NT, then you'll need to select the first option. And we'll just click Next. Now we need to set an administrator password. This password will be required when we need to perform Active Directory restorations. Now this password can be different from the domain administrator password when you installed your server. So if you elect to make it different, make sure you remember both passwords or you'll be in trouble when you need to restore Active Directory objects later. So we enter our password, we'll click Next, and now we're presented with a summary of the options we've chosen. Now if you need to make changes, click the back, back button here, or else if it all looks right, click Next to start installing and configuring Active Directory and DNS on this server. Now this will take a while. So I'll pause the video here and resume when the wizard has completed. So go and get a coffee or watch a few Winstructor videos or something. OK, so as you can see we're now done. The wizard has finished and we now have a confirmation message that Active Directory is installed on our server. Click Finish and now we'll have to restart our server. Once your server has been restarted, Active Directory will have successfully been installed.